Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Uh, Justin Rogers, surprisingly working two days in a row. Um, <laughs> back at Lions facility uh, today on Friday. It's a Thursday practice for the team, uh, which is kind of confusing to me because Caldwell keeps saying Thursday and it's definitely Friday. I already made that mistake once in the story. Um, but it's a long practice today for the Lions. And, and, and James Ahedibo was back today, Justin, and that's, I think, big for the Lions just with him being out the last two games of the preseason and losing the reps that were there. Uh, and not practicing with the with the neck and knee injuries, um, got him back today. That puts him on a on a on a path on a trajectory, um, trajectory to to play Monday against the Giants. What's your take on Ahedebo's, um return and his importance to the defense? You know, I I'm not convinced Ahedebo is that important. I th I think he's a good leader. Um, you know, the reason they brought him in was durability. But what I saw in the preseason was um, you know some of the glaring inconsistencies that that have made him, I guess. Uh, a guy that's bounced around the league a little bit. He's he's not that great in coverage. He he can bring big hits, but he he can get beat. Gets a team like the Giants that are going to sling it quite a bit. Um, you know he's going to be a little bit of a liability out there, especially if he's uh, you know not completely up to speed with with his um, conditioning. Uh, you know it's it's an opportunity that's probably going to be missed for a guy like Abdul Kudus or um, James Couplin, but. Uh, I, I don't think that there's a big difference if, if those guys are out there this week versus versus ahead of I, I disagree. Um, and I think uh, I do think we've overstated the um uh, value or I, I should say performance throughout the preseason. We've been we've we've been fed a line from the, the staff a little bit on how important he is and how good he was coming from a championship caliber defense and all the tackles he had last year, which he did have quite a few. Um, and he came from a system, you know, familiar with Terrell Austin, um, his hand-picked guy at strong safety, all these things, right? Well, if you look at the metrics and over this guy's career, he's, he's not he's not a pro bowler, okay? They didn't just sign a guy who's going to totally transform what they do. And he's 30 years old, so he's not going to likely make any huge transformation in that way either. And when you, when you compare him to the guy he's replacing, Louis Delmas, I'm not convinced he's a huge upgrade or an upgrade at all. No, uh, so it's, it's a, always been a lateral it, move in my mind. Right. Um, and now where I disagree with you is I, I think when you look at a Monday night football game uh, against the New York Giants, opening the season, this platform, when you compare a heady bow to the guy who would play if he doesn't play or start if he doesn't start, which would probably, probably be Jerome Couplin, uh, who is an undrafted guy of William & Mary. And going from that environment, William & Mary, not to take anything away from, from them, but that's a different environment than playing Monday night football in Ford Field against the Giants in a season opener. I would value the, the veteranness, the veteran savvy of James Ahedibo in an environment like that over, over Coupland. And I think that's the value you get from having him, especially to start the season. Um, I, I don't think he's a world beater. I don't think he's a huge upgrade over Delmas. I do think we've overstated a bit uh, his performance, but I think I think he's uh, having him available would be big for this defense um, in the in the season opener. I, I don't think it would be Coupland. I think it would have been Kudis. Uh, really? You know, yeah, a guy that that Kudis is, is more of a free safety. Yeah, and and Quinn can play both. I, I asked uh, defensive coordinator Terrell Austin if if the situation arose, would you move Quinn to strong because he's played it in Houston before? And he said that would definitely be an option on the table. He's confident all the guys can play all the positions, but that's that's what yeah. a good coach says. At the, at the same time, Caldwell, when he was asked today, who would step in if, about Hedy Bow, he was asked about the rookie, undrafted rookie, which is obviously Couplin, and he said it's ever whoever's next on the, on the depth chart, which is Couplin. So. I, I wonder if he even looked at the depth chart. You know, those things are generally made by the PR staff. They sign off on not in the regular season. They're unofficial. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. This is, this is I not guarantee college. You, I guarantee you Caldwell sees that every single time it crosses his, de his desk, especially in week one. I, I don't think, you know, that they're in any mood to let the opponent know what they're actually thinking. You know, and No, and I agree. I'm just saying it wouldn't, it's, not a, it's not decided it would be Kudis. I think that Couplin is definitely in that equation. He'd play a lot, if not start, if... If anybody didn't play, you know I, I, what I liked about uh, Kudis in the preseason was that he was around the ball a lot. I know he had two picks. There were a couple others that, that hit his hand. He probably should have intercepted. Uh, he, he plays the center field aspect well. Yeah. Um, the Giants are are going to try to run the ball. I don't think they're going to be a particularly good run team with that that offensive line. So I think you need somebody that can play in space better, and and that's why I think you know Kudis would have been better in this particular game. And you know whatever, it's still on the table. Uh, we don't know 
uh, how much ahead of Bo practice today. We don't know his status for the game. It looks like he's trending toward playing, but um, I, I would say it's still up in the air. Yeah, I think the key for the the Lions doesn't really change whether or not he had is out there, and I think they need to get pressure from the from the the front seven, and that'll be a key all year. You're gonna get sick of hearing about it because we're gonna write about it every single week. But the Lions have a distinct distinct advantage against most teams with their front seven. But I think they'll be a disadvantage in the in the in the secondary unless Slade turns out to be a world beater, which I'm not particularly counting on. But there's a lot of questions marks in the, in the secondary, and they have uh, an all-pro up front in the, in the front seven. They have six of the front seven back from last year. I think you have to be pleased with that group, especially when they're going up against a, a Giants team. We've talked about this all week, Justin, that their offensive line is in shambles, both from a performance pat aspect from last year as well as injury uh, aspect this year with both of the guards out. I think they're going to try to get pressure up front, and that won't change whether or not you had a both plays. I think you're going to see a lot of quick passing. Obviously, it's a West Coast offense. It's short timing routes. Uh, they're going to try to neutralize the defensive line that way. Um, you know, the secondary is going to just have to make their tackles. They can't. They can't miss tackles. It's another ahead of a weakness. You know, he miss. He makes a lot yeah. of tackles. He, I think he was close to leading the league last year, but he also was among the most missed tackles in the league. So, got to wrap him up. That's what we got um, for Justin Rogers. I'm Kyle Mikey. We're M Life. Keep it right here as the Lions return to practice on Saturday and then open the the season up on Monday Night Football against the Giants.